All right, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome back to another Warcraft 3 replay cast. Today it's a one versus one on Ancient Isles. It is a Warcraft 3 Arena Net top replay of the week, so you know it's going to be a good one. It's also a Gara Cup final game. Down at the bottom, we have our pink undead player, Believe, and up top, we have our blue night elf player, Scott, better known as Foggy. We're going to speed this up to the 8x mark, and a small uh, anecdote if you guys want one, and if you don't want it, you got to get it anyway. I had to try about six Ancient Isles maps before this one would work. And so I went to about a dozen websites trying to find this particular map, and uh, I think this is the hardest map I've actually had to try to find on Warcraft 3 before the replay worked, and uh, why? I don't really know, but uh, it is what it is. A Claws of Attack plus 6 for that Demon Hunter, Ancient of War soaking up all that damage, and the Undead player, he's going to be creeping this Ogre Magic Camp. This is sort of one of two undead strategies, you either creep with some ghouls with your death knight or you actually just go to your opponent's creep camp and you try to steal a kill with your death coil or steal the item, disrupt him in some way. So gonna be creeping out to this camp here as his particular strategy and this ogre magi will fall sooner or later and it is really resisting death. There are a circlet of nobility drops for that demon hunter, or for the death knight rather, and demon hunter on his way. And this Death Knight's about to get mana burned soon here. And I'm surprised it hasn't occurred already. Demon Hunter trying to get some of these Skeleton Warrior kills. So it's sort of free, easy experience killing those uh, little Skeleton Warriors. And Death Knight nearly level 2. Demon Hunter nearly level 2. Both killed the same creep camp. They're both at the same level of experience. And in chase for a moment there, but uh, really couldn't catch up to that uh, demon under there a little bit too quick. And back at the Night Elf base here, Tree of Ages coming shortly, and at some Moon Wells. So just skipping past of that tech as fast as possible, using that Archer spamage from that Ancient of War. And now Undead going to go after the Knoll Overseer camp at the shop, and has two rods of Necromancy, only one charge on the other one. Tome of Agility plus two also has that Dust of Appearance, just in case any of those archers decide to Shadow Meld on him. He'll be able to cast that and kill him off and leaves a Tome of Agility plus two for his opponent. And uh, again, that's why you take Tomes. All you gotta do is just click on it. Because even if it doesn't affect your hero all that much, that Demon Hunter sure would like that. That's two extra damage and what, 0.6 uh, extra armor for really nothing for just clicking so and if the demon or if the death knight rather would have uh, just clicked on that it would have prevented his opponent from getting it and you can't uh, can't forget the attack speed of agility as well but it's not really all that significant demon hunter very very low at 70 health and I'm gonna try and finish off this null overseer looks like the archers are gonna try and snipe that and do they snipe it? I think they may have actually sniped that. Death Knight at that much experience and the Demon Hunter. I think they may have actually sniped that and gave the uh, Demon Hunter that proxy experience. Century Wards on the ground has not been picked up yet by the Death Knight. And he's going to grab them now. Century Wards always really, really good. And I think they're really, really good, exceptionally good, rather, against uh, Orc as he can just lay down some sentry wards and sometimes as a blade master you don't know that there's a sentry ward there and you also don't realize that you know that you don't have a dust of appearance on you because nothing has been popped no dust of appearance buff on you and you just wonder why you're being attacked and how you're getting hit in windwalk form and then you go oh yeah there's probably a spirit or a sentry ward on the ground somewhere and by then it's too late sometimes naga sea witch falls uh, very unnecessarily and so that's going to give a good chunk of experience to the Demon Hunter and the Brewmaster there to Foggy. And could have tried a little harder to keep that Naga Sea Witch alive. A player's forces are under attack. Demon Hunter trying to run away, or the Death Knight rather. I always get them mixed up because the uh, both of them start with D and E. No Lord Seer camp. Going to fall here to the Night Elf. And what kind of free stuff will drop here? Circlet of ability, not too bad. Looks like the Pandora Brewmaster is going to pick that up. Oh, 
And believe he's got to really got to watch these ghouls. These low health ghouls are just food for the Brewmaster. Breath of Fire loves to eat up ghouls. Now you can see what she's back in the action here. And the Death Knight so low nearly killed that Brewmaster there. But the Scroll of Town Portal was transferred from the Demon Hunter to the Brewmaster to keep him invincible for a moment while he was getting out of there. Now going to be all healed up with those Moonwells. Two Ancient Allures popping up here. And Slaughterhouse for the Undead, and naturally. Going to get those Obsidian statues out shortly. And is he going to go after this Troll Warlord? And it looks like he's going to be able to successfully do this as his opponent is all the way down on the other side of the map currently. And what treasures may fall from the Troll Warlord? And it looks like a, a Mana Stone has dropped there. Very, very nice item. While you're not using it, of course, that 25% uh, increased mana regen isn't really much, but uh, it's really nice to hold on to. And Brewmaster going after the camp down here. Ring of Regeneration for the Brewmaster, which may end up getting sold later. And Death Knight is really, really low. i wait for this Obsidian statue to start healing him up. And I'd like to think that this uh, Mana Stone here is likely to get used throughout the game at some point. I usually like to hold on to them as long as I can because that 25% mana regen is pretty nice. A player's forces are under attack. But you gotta do what you gotta do. And sometimes you just gotta use it. And no poacher camp falls there. Nothing too crazy. I actually gets uh, the Death Knight level 3 there, so he must have been very, very close. So level 3 Death uh, Demon Hunter and a level 3 Death Knight versus the. Level 1 at Naga Sea Witch. The level 2 Brewmaster. Kills that Red Drake there. Gets Rune Bracers. Very, very nice item against that Death Knight. Suffer less damage from those Death Coils. And one of those Sentry Wards well, placed here, are under attack. I believe. The other one looks like it is... Nope, not up there. Don't know where the other one was placed. Oh, nope, all the way up here. I see that now. Death Knight was trying to pull that creep camp. The Troll Warlord, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen right now with the Night Elf pressuring. And not a good idea to pull that Warlord when you're being pressured by your opponent. Now have a Lich out on the field here and sporting that Orb of Corruption. Demon Hunter there teleports back to base and probably going to get an Orb of Venom indeed. Just does just that. Now Troll Warlord here may fall and does healing wards have dropped. And what even happened to those healing wards there? Were they destroyed? That was very interesting. Oh no, they were picked up. I just didn't actually see that Lich pick those up. That was a, a very nice pilfer there from that Lich. Must be a very good thief because I didn't even see that happen. Kind of like those people that steal your watch off your hands on the street while they distract you. Kleptomaniac Lich. And healing wards, two of them sort of... Uh, Kind of wasted there. Gave a little bit of health to the undead army, but uh, one of one, one of them was destroyed right off the bat, and the second one didn't really last all that much longer. And now the night elf in retreat, and some very low dryads and or archers here. One of them's gonna fall, and this dryad will probably fall as well. Unless we can get to a moonwell, but no, it gets out of there. The benefit of being half woman, half hooved animal is your incredible speed. So far, a fairly even game. A 
players forces are under attack. the night of expansion is cleared so he can't actually expand there closet attack plus six for the undead there gonna put that on the death knight for now and is he gonna transfer that to the lich indeed he does So the Undead's expansion is not clear, so he can't really expand, but the Night Elf can. No Lover Seer will fall here. Replenishment Potion, eh, not too bad. Certainly could use much better items than that. Lich nearly falls there, but takes a Death Coil. And now the Demon Hunter in a little bit of trouble here, but gets teleported out of there. And Lich... Really having to run here, getting focus fired down. And now the bear is going after the weak Crypt Fiends. One of them falls, gives level two to that Lich. And should now have Frost uh, frost Armor, unless he chose uh, a uh, chosen uh, Death Pack, or Dark Ritual, rather. And now see which falls as well. So two heroes down from the undead army. So much experience to the Brewmaster and the Demon Hunter. I'm not sure if the Demon Hunter was there for the fall of the Lich, but he was certainly there for the Nagasee Witch. But either way, quite a bit of experience to the Night Elf army there. And Tavern Revival of the Sea Witch. However, no mana and only half health. And half health on a Sea Witch is basically no health because she doesn't have much health to begin with. And this Brewmaster is really dead set on taking out this Crypt Fiend, but he burrows and makes it out of there. And it does look like the Night Elf is expanding now, has a Tree of Life growing on the left side of the map here. A player's forces are under attack. And has been pointed out by one of the observers. But I saw it first, so therefore I'm the winner. And Naga Seawitch in big trouble here. I don't think she's going to make it. As long as she continuously gets struck by that Dryad, she will be super slow. And Naga Seawitch falls again. And I think that is the third hero that has fallen for the undead so far. Maybe even the fourth. The Boneyard there falls. Unable to complete for the undead. We'll have to remake that now. Did get cancelled though. We'll be able to just make another one in the back of the base where it is much safer. Sacrificial pit of uh, the prerequisite for that boneyard, and I don't see a shade around on the map. And really, gotta have a shade. If you're going for frost worms, you might as well have a shade. Because they are super, super awesome, and you just pretty much follow a hero and uh, your enemy's army around, see everything they're doing. That is invaluable information. Death Knight sells that dust of appearance. Looks like he never even really used it, and now picks up a scroll of healing instead. Looks like he's going to go after the Knoll Overseer camp up here. Or perhaps this camp, but uh, nope, looks like the Overseer camp. So now his expansion will be open, ready for the taking. And Overseer falls there. Talisman of Evasion. Could have asked for a better item, but uh, Talisman of Evasion, sure, why not? And a Demon Hunter here. Killing off some of these. Gets a, another Tome of Agility, plus two. That's at least plus four agility in tomes for that uh, for that uh, demon hunter there. I didn't see any other tomes that he had picked up. And the demon hunter falls. And it looks like a dark pack there. Took out one of those uh, ghouls, giving the lich just enough mana to frost nova. So that was a pretty quick reaction. Consume that ghoul and then frost nova your opponent in one fell swoop. Warlock Nightcrawler camp here, gonna go down uh, by the undead. And it looks like that Night Elf expansion is up and running strong. So we'll soon have a major advantage over the undead in terms of economy. But first, Tomb Agility plus two, and this time he grabs it. 
to prevent that from falling into the Demon Hunter, because if the Demon Hunter were to pick up that, that'd be quite a bit of agility uh, for that Demon Hunter there. Now I'm going to go after the Red Drake. Now I can see which eating up all of that damage there, and falls. Now I can see which grabs a Subby Mask. Very, very nice item. I think that's one of my favorite items in the game to have. I always have a nice grin on my face when a Subby Mask falls. Because you know your hero is just going to be awesome for the rest of the game. 50% regeneration is super good, as you can see, just hauling. Home of Intelligence for the Night Elf, taking out that small camp. It doesn't look like there's too many camps left on the map. Looks like we have uh, this little Geomancer camp and a Brute camp. And we do have this... Nightcrawler camp down here as well. And one lonely warden just standing there. To everybody has neglected. Frost wear him out for the undead now. Three destroyers as well. But not really a lot of magic to consume. A town is under siege. H of Wind will fall there pretty quickly, but. I wasn't really using that too much anyway. Just got some hippogriffs with that uh, hippogriff going after the frost worm. Frost worm taking a lot of damage. The dry uh, dryad's going after it as well. And is a death coil going to hit that or not? He does have 75 mana now, 80 mana, but it has been mana burn, so he cannot death coil that uh, frost worm now. Only 200 health, 300 health le rather left on that frost worm. And Frostworm, very low, 120 health. And really got to watch this. He's bringing it back into battle, and that's maybe a bad idea here. And it may fall soon, and it does fall to that Breath of Fire. And that was actually a really long-range Breath of Fire. I think it just looked extra far because he was up there on the higher elevation. Demon Hunter was sent back to the Night Elf base for healing. Meanwhile, these Druids of the Claw are going to be vulnerable. And free experience now for the undead, but Staff of Preservation there sends one of them home. And now the Ancient of War. Ancient of Wind will be next here. Gotta love that experience. Love that money. And Tree of Life may fall, but the Night Elf is coming shortly here, running down the way. And only half health to that tree of life. Burrowed Crypting here, so low. Looked like it is actually poisoned as well, fighting the regeneration, fighting the poison. And Undead forced away from the expansion for now. And the battle continues here. Goblin Shredder in the mix, because why not? As the uh, Goblin Shredder is actually a pretty good uh, combatant. 34 to 61 does more damage than Druids of the Claw with a level 1 upgrade as well. Actually, quite a bit more. Now I can see which about half health there. And another Hippogriff out on the field. They're going to be going after this Frost Worm here, but Spider says no more of that nonsense. And using that Frost Worm just to pretty much hit the hero and run, hit the hero and run. Goblin Shredder falls. Level 4 Death Knight, level 3 Sea Witch, and a level 3 Lich. That level 4 Brewmaster, and what is that level 4 Demon Hunter as well? So superior levels here on the Undead Army, quite superior, even for having 3 heroes. Level 5, a level 4, and a level 3 to 2 level 4s. So that's actually quite a bit more experience this Undead has gotten, considering he's sharing it 3 ways and not just 2. Frostworm falls there to all of those dryads. That's going to be a fair loss for the undead. It's going to take him a while to build another one of those. 
And now we can see what's trying to get away here. But Night Elf going after her. She will probably fall here soon. So close and does. We're now down to two heroes here for the undead. Lich may also fall, does. And so now two heroes down for the undead. Superior hero numbers. But unfortunately, once they all fall, they fall super hard. Death Knight now trying to get back to base here, trying to get back to the Blight. And should just keep backing up a little bit more. Blight might as well have that slight extra regeneration. Impossible defense from his uh, Black Citadel there. Another Frostworm is out and could be the saving grace, but there's a little bit too many Dryads. And not enough spiders to actually take care of those Dryads, as the uh, Frostworm, of course, is completely and utterly useless against Dryads. And I believe has to GG out. Doesn't really have any money. His expansion gone. Never expanded throughout the game there. So a very, very good game. And that was the uh, Gara Cup Final, or at least as said by uh, on Warcraft 3 ArenaNet. And so a very close game. Superior heroes on believe, but uh, simply just took too much damage at the end. Lost all those heroes. And that was about it. 5, 4, 3 to a 5 and a 5. And at the end, those heroes gained a lot of experience by killing off the undead army and, of course, killing both the Nagasiewicz and the Lich. And resources gained quite a bit more for the Night Elf, of course, because he also expanded and even lost more gold to upkeep. But I hope you guys enjoyed the replay, and I will see you guys next time.